Hello everyone, happy Friday. I'm Miranda and welcome to my YouTube channel. My mum Donna Hello. is joining me today for our regular Friday Tea Reads episode and throughout December up until Christmas we're doing some special Christmassy Tea read sessions where we bake something festive and then we share some of our favourite Christmas reads by the kitchen fireside. So today I'm really excited because we're making Christmas cakes. We are. And then we're going to get to eat a slice. Exactly. Later on and share some good books. So I'm really looking forward me to too, that. Me too. I'll pop the link to the recipe that we're using in the description box down below. We're using a recipe from Nigella's Christmas. As you know, we're big Nigella Lawson fans and we're doing her incredibly easy chocolate fruit cake. So Isn't not... that an encouraging title? <laughs> it's the incredibly easy that it's that yes, we're all about the easy, aren't yeah, we? we? Are. And I guess it's a bit of a twist on the very traditional fruit cake. I think so, and, and to me, because I've I sort of tweak recipes a bit, as you know. Yes, all but, the time. Um, but what I did, I do find around this time of year is, especially when there's just a small family or two of us, yeah. you can get an awful lot. You can be given fruit cake, the traditional type. You know, I usually yeah. make one ourselves anyway. Yeah. And um, it's nice to have something a little bit different that you can give away and also to eat yourself. So yes. this one is delicious. Yes, it is. And we're baking some to give away too. Yes. So we'll have our own fruit cake, but we're also going to be probably freezing one and then giving away quite a few too. I think so. I yes. Think so, yes. So I'm really excited. It's a really foggy day. Definitely time to get festive. Lovely. So will, will you explain a bit about what yes, we need? Absolutely. Well, I did start last night with this bit which is the really fiddly <laughs> bit. bit and Tasty. this I actually have a I think a story you don't even know to tell about the first time I ever made my own it was a traditional fruit cake but it was about actually lining um double lining the tins now Nigel's original recipe calls I believe for a 20 centimeter it's quite a big round tin right. she uses yes for us I just think that's a bit too much so what yeah. I've chosen is I've used one 15 centimeter and then two 12 centimeters so you've got I think this is the perfect size, size to give away especially yeah. to put you know a couple or a single person or somebody who just likes a little bit really yes you yes. know I think that's a sweet size yeah. and they, they cook slightly quicker but not hugely different so it you can yes. just whip them out as you go you just along. need to keep your eye on so we are deviating from the recipe in that way aren't yes we? we're that's... using different tin sizes yes but yes that's... but that's it yes, yes. <laughs> All right, so what do we have? So first of all, you need prunes, and these you get, I always find they're easier to scissor them. They do say chopped or oh, scissors, right. I always scissor. So this is all going to go in. And the lovely thing about this recipe is that you just um, basically bring it all to the boil and then you simmer it for 10 minutes and then I let it all cool and then add the sort of eggs and flowers and then it all goes into the tin. But this was a very similar recipe Next thing is raisins, and the next thing is currants. To many of these very easy, um, I did I weigh out this all earlier because um, you want to go through the currants and the raisins and make sure there are no stalks or bits yes. in them. Yeah, yeah. So then after that, I think she suggests. What does she have us add after the fruit? So let's see. Um, so then the butter. butter, sugar and honey. Yeah. So here we have chopped up softened butter. Just go in there too. And I've weighed out the sugar, which is there. If you just want to toss yeah. that in for me. Pop it in. Yeah, all in. So Lovely. what was that about your... Oh, well, it's a, you know, I got married when I was 19 and your dad and I went off to university in Toronto. And um, 
what would happen was it was our very first Christmas. We married in the August. I was 19 years old. <laughs> and I felt, you know, I'm not being a very calm person. You all know that. Like, I don't yes, that. you are. But I right. had this tremendous sense of I wanted to make Christmas right. It's our first married Christmas. I wanted it perfect. Yes. Well, of course, I'd never made a fruitcake before by myself. And the one thing I didn't know how to do was actually to double line the fruit tins. And mm, this was yeah. a very skimpy recipe I had with hardly any detail, but it also told you to tie a double wrapping of um, paper around the outside. It oh was goodness. one of these great big tins that spent <laughs> about four hours, I think, in the <laughs> oven. Well, I tried with that baking paper. I was doing it and, you know, your dad was working and I had sort of started planning in October for this. So I <laughs> read to Paul, my dear Auntie Con in England and said, you know, I want to get one of these um, paper wrapping things to go outside of the square cake. And she, and I said, and what do you use to make the holes, you know, to yes. put, because I knew she'd be good at it. Yes. She sent me this old, very thin knitting needle, which was perfect. And then she, um, was so, so kind and she sent me the red wrapping um, bit of like sort of paper with a bit of ribbon thread. Right, I really wanted, right. did all this. So I was ready, I bought, you know, I bought the bits I'd saved to do yes, it all. Yes. You can imagine. And I could not figure out the instructions of how to do that. And I was almost in tears and I, you know, it was <laughs> so I found my mum and I was like, I don't know how to do this. How do you do this? And like, how do you get them to stay in? Because it like spring <laughs> out every time. You know, I just had no clue no. how to get these in. Yeah. And she didn't, I don't, she tried to explain to me, but I'm, as you know, I, I'm not very good on sort of like things like origami. Miranda can do this. I am hopeless. I can't follow instructions yes. like yeah. that. I got more and more in a state. And she was like, well, they're non-stick tins. I'm sure it'll be fine. Just go ahead. <laughs> And I was like, no, I don't think it will. It's hours in there, they're going to burn. And she said, well, you can always just cut the burnt bits off. And I was like, no, this is our first Christmas. I don't want to really see, like this horrible oh, idea. Okay, right. So what happened? So basically, my dad came on, tried to explain to me, still couldn't get it. And he said, well, look, if it doesn't work out, he said, they were very loving parents. We'll put $10 in an envelope and you can buy one. And your mum says there's a Marks and Spencer's nearby in Toronto, and there was. And he said, You can go and buy an ice cream. So don't worry. And that gave me the confidence. I just yeah. somehow managed to get darn paper in there. I don't know how I did it. Stuffed the thing in and threw it in the oven. In fact, it was really good. Oh, well, so, you know, so it was That's just the confidence. It was. <laughs> but I've always like sort of thought these things can be way more nerve wracking. I didn't have the confidence no, at that point. No, no. You know, well, I'm glad I got you to help me now. So you put the sugar oh, in yeah, and you honey. put the orange zest yeah. and honey. And then I mix the orange juice and the... She says Tia Marie, a coffee liqueur. I use Kahlua. It's the same what, sort of thing. Had. Had. Yeah. Yeah. And that and all oh. goes into, and we give that a little bit of a stir around. Yep. A spatula even might do. <laughs> yes, oh, it's red. We yes. actually got one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, we thought you'd all be so pleased. <laughs> Yes, so just, there you are using yeah, the spoon, is it? <laughs> and to remind you there. <laughs> there we go, that will do. Let me just go. Oh, yeah. And then, yeah, I'm just going to swap because I'm more comfortable. <laughs> and then, oh, actually, okay. I nearly forgot that's the cocoa powder and the mixed spice. So that all yeah. goes into it. Put it in? Yep. Just dump all that in for me. So the chocolate comes from the cocoa. It does. It doesn't. Matter. This one, she does another one which she uses real chocolate, but this one uses cocoa, and it's a lovely, rich, yes, taste. Yes. yes. And then we'll just take this and bring it gently to the boil, and then simmer for ten minutes. Okay. okay. So we'll show you that bit. Okay. So you're at the stove. I am. I've turned the burner on. I'm going to bring this to the boil. Yeah. Just stirring it all the time. And then once it comes up to the boil, you simmer it for um, 10 minutes and then it has to sit for 30 just to cool off enough to add in the eggs and the flour. Okay. So it's a nice, simple recipe. Yeah, so we're just going to keep stirring and bring it to the boil, let it simmer, and then you'll cool. see us again yeah. in a bit. <laughs> 
And we're back. The cake mixture has cooled. Yeah. Looking delicious. Mm, smelling delicious it is. too. It is. So we're just going to add the... This is the ground almonds, the flour, the bicarb of soda and the baking powder. So that's wonderful. Pop that in and then we'll add the eggs, eggs in as well. Yeah. I was thinking about my Christmas oh, yeah, cake remember. memories. Well, obviously I remember you making Christmas cakes throughout my childhood and well still now <laughs> um, and you'd often make a dark and a lighter Christmas I would. cake I would do both which, yeah that was such a treat I mean I always loved that but we also always got Uncle Reg's Christmas cake every Did you year that? he was so faithful even when you were living in London he still sent you one yes he would have and it was the funniest thing I don't know how he started this tradition but oh, he loved that cake I know I don't yeah. know how he first tasted it but he would send our family every year this amazing huge. dense huge <laughs> rich Christmas cake from Dallas, Texas, of yes. all places. Yes. I think it was something like the Collins Street Bakery. I think they still make them to ship. We have to have a look. Yes. If they do, I'll link it in the yes. description box. But he loved this Christmas cake. He was British and never yeah. lived in the States. No, nope. no. Nope. But this bakery from Dallas, Texas. I think somebody must have sent him yeah, one. Someone some must have. And he yeah. just loved it. And these cakes were full of nuts and candied fruit yes. and just you know really, no, no really batter it was just solid, was solid fruit and nuts yes. is what I remember it really he was he yeah. loved the nuttiness of he did I mean, he loved nuts yes. but it was so funny because even when I was in London yeah he'd send me then my own one <laughs> You always have one. I always visited you for Christmas anyway. <laughs> you would still send me a whole Christmas cake. So I mean, I'd invite people round. Yes, and, you know, yes. sort of like divvy it out. Yeah, you know? yeah. <laughs> imagine because you're not a huge nut lover. No, no. It's so, very uh, nutty this cake. Yes. And even though I liked it because you know it was tradition, tradition. it was it meant Christmas. It was, you know, from my beloved great uncle. Yeah. So I would still eat it. Yes. But it wasn't like my favourite thing to eat. <laughs> no. But I said that, I used to say that to him. Well, you know, it's you could send her just a small one. It's not that looks mean. She <laughs> could have a big one. <laughs> well, he was always very generous. Well, but yes, that's one of my strongest Christmas fruitcake memories and in fact in some of the readings I've chosen to do later yes um they speak to the delight in sending Christmas uh cakes mm. as gifts I giving them as lovely. gifts to people yeah and it is a wonderful tradition it to is. do that I it think. is and he yeah. had memories I, I know he told me of like my mum because she'd married a Canadian they would mm. send like dried fruit and Candied cherries and eggs and stuff during the war, of course, so that she could have sugar and, and post war. Oh, yes, I think so. Still. Yes, yes, yeah, right. So, I put the three eggs in, I put the flour mm, in the it oven. looks it delicious, looks really good. It looks so good. And now we just have to divide it up between these three. Do you want to bring those two over? Okay, yeah. two tiny or two tiny ones and. The biggest, Big slightly worse. big size yeah. one. I mean, as I said, with um, Nigella, she makes one quite huge one. Too. Yes. But for us, I think this is no, a lovely we'll be size. eating that forever. And it's nice to do some escape. It is. Whoops. There we go. When that happens, you just <laughs> pop it in. <laughs> Don't worry, it's going to cook for a while. <laughs> and my hands are clean. Yes. <laughs> Get this in. Well, this is looking really lovely. It's lovely, isn't it? It's dark because of the it's chocolate. really dark. The, cho the chocolate really gives it that mm, extra rich looking, rich looking colour. Mm. It's just glowing somehow. That it is it, and I think you know one way to test when your cake's looking done is it should look, especially this one, sort of shiny and sticky on the top a little bit. Yes, you're right. Yeah. Yes. So this looks to me. Perfect. 
Wonderful. Or perfect enough. <laughs> it me. looks pretty perfect to me. Oh, good. And then I'll just do these two. And then we just really keep our eye on them, don't you? How I long, think, well, I remember how long. Yeah, yeah. I think um, basically around an hour and five minutes mm. for the small ones. What, the smallest? Yeah. Mm -hmm. They still take longer than you'd think. I mean, it's they such do. a dense cake. They do. And then perhaps, um, like, perhaps an hour and 20 minutes, 25 minutes for the big one. If you think it's getting a little brown on top, rather than do what my mum suggested, which was just cut off the burn bit, <laughs> I would say lay a bit of um, <laughs> uh, foil loosely on top so yes. that you know you can stop that from happening. But, <laughs> or just cut off the burn. <laughs> <laughs> well, I love the, the, the your father suggested you can just buy a cake <laughs> yes, down yes, and yes. I wouldn't make it. <laughs> exactly, and it, was, it wasn't really like that. You know, I, I look back on my younger self and right a little smile because I wanted it so much to be perfect. Yes. You know how you do something now. Now you have more of Natalie's attitude. <laughs> you can always <laughs> burn the bits off. No, you don't burn your cake. No, I try not to. But if I did, <laughs> wouldn't panic. I wouldn't panic no. indeed. Yes. I'll just put a bit more in yes. that one. I do think these little dainty ones <laughs> make think such a cute that spatula food. is clean. <laughs> oh, yes. Well, I will use it Oh, I will use it to scrape out the last bit so that there I we go. That's what everyone keeps telling us it's so useful for. <laughs> I don't know, it doesn't seem very British to use a spatula. <laughs> there are lots of good cooks who do, but make do. <laughs> yes. Okay. Good. Let me just get these extra last bits. Because it is lush. It is really good for getting down and getting the last bits. Yes. These are looking lovely though. Oh, good. Probably to hold it. Nah, it's no, okay. okay. Yeah. I think you wiped it pretty clean. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Wonderful. So we're just going to pop all of these in the yeah. oven and we'll see you a bit later. Bye for now. And we're back. Hello again. Hello. And I have to say, this looks spectacular. <laughs> Well done you. One I made you show the top. There we are. I think it looks absolutely gorgeous. There we go. There's a little robin on the post office box, which I think is so sweet. Well, in honour of you, and the robin and the holly on the ribbon too. Clever <laughs> <laughs> you. And we kept things simple. We just did um some chocolate stars yes and some edible gold glitter spray that you can use i think it looks very pretty it is lovely i love a bit of edible glitter <laughs> yes me too and it just brightened it up because we didn't want to go the whole hog of ice and icing no. marzy pan for this time okay. no not for one with chocolate in it we thought that this was a better bet i love yes. that ribbon yes so pretty. <laughs> Take out the little Merry Christmas sign. Oh, one. that is pretty. And um, shall I do the tattoo? I've even got my. You have? Oh, I know. In That's honor. So effective. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, thank you. Yeah. You, <laughs> you do the cutting. I'm very excited to try this. Well, hopefully it's a good one. Mm. I'm sure it will be. It looks amazing. Let's just make sure you get it. Let us know what type of Christmas cakes you bake, if you do oh, bake a Christmas do. cake this time of year, then we'd love to know if you do a really traditional one or if you have a bit of a twist on the, on the classic as well, we'd love to know. Yes, I think different places do different things, like um, your grandma, she in Canada, she likes to make one called a gumdrop cake. Oh! Yes, which sounds wonderful. Um, you have to be very careful, I think, that you've got the right sort of gumdrops, not <laughs> licorice ones or something. Oh, yes, yes, mm. yes, definitely. But I think they make sort of baking, baking 
gumdrops or something like that. I don't know if you need the fork, but it's there if you do. Oh, thank you. I'll oh, just slice. Goodness. Oh, I need to show you a slice too because I just think it looks fabulous. Look at that. With the glitter always, and the stars. You're always such a loyal daughter. <laughs> <laughs> well, for good reason. I think it will taste really good. <laughs> yes, definitely. <laughs> Looks wonderful. A bit of my tea. Lovely. Feeling so Christmassy. This is amazing. Oh, yes, there's something about Christmas cake, mm. isn't there? Yes. And right by the fire. Oh, lovely. All right. Let's have a bit. Let's try. So rich looking, isn't it? It, it is. looks wonderful. It does. So this one I made at the beginning of the week. Mm. Um, but you don't have to let them sit weeks and weeks or anything. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. <laughs> wow. <laughs> it's very good. Oh, it, it is. is so good. Yeah, we did a Blue Peter moment again, mm -hmm. didn't we? Mm -hmm. One we made earlier. <laughs> well, by the time the ones in the oven cool, and we would be here forever. <laughs> yes, tuners would be very late. But the they most. do keep very well if you mm. wrap them up. Oh, they heat really well, and you can always yes. freeze one, as you said. We've done that before. That really is mm. amazing. Chocolate's just very special. And you don't yeah. know that it's prunes, do you? No, you don't. And it's not overwhelmingly chocolate either, I wouldn't say. Somehow it just it's not. adds a lovely taste to it. It does. Well, same with the, the really coffee liqueur. It's not as No, it isn't. All. It isn't. But oh, it's just so moist and rich and delicious mm. and fruity. I love it. <laughs> oh, good. Good, good, good. So what are you going to read first? Yes, I've chosen some readings myself this week in honour of this oh, special lovely. cake. Lovely. The first one that I've picked is a Christmas classic. It's <laughs> the short story A Christmas Memory by Truman Capote. I know lots of people know and love this story. It's a favourite of ours and it's all about making Christmas cake. And I think that would have been the Collins Street Bakery type that Uncle Richard I think so to too, yes. Mm. Uh, so I'll just read a little extract from it. Imagine a morning in late November, a coming of winter morning more than 20 years ago. Consider the kitchen of a spreading old house in a country town. A great black stove is its main feature, but there is also a big round table and a fireplace with two rocking chairs placed in front of it. Just today, the fireplace commenced its seasonal roar. A woman with shorn white hair is standing at the kitchen window. She is wearing tennis shoes and a shapeless grey sweater over a summery calico dress. She is small and sprightly, like a bantam hen. <laughs> but due to a, to a long, useful illness, her shoulders are pitifully hunched. Her face is remarkable, not unlike Lincoln's, craggy like that and tinted by sun and wind, but it is delicate too, finely boned, and her eyes are sherry-coloured and timid. Oh my, she exclaims, her breath smoking the window pane. It's fruitcake weather. I know it before I got out of bed, she says, turning away from the window with a purposeful excitement in her eyes. The courthouse bell sounded so cold and clear and there were no birds singing. They've gone to warmer country, yes indeed. Oh buddy, stop stuffing biscuit and fetch our buggy. Help me find my hat, we've 30 cakes to bake. <laughs> it's always the same. A morning arrives in November and my friend, as though officially inaugurating the Christmas time of year that exhilarates her imagination and fuels the blaze of her heart, announces, it's fruitcake weather. Fetch our buggy. Help me find my hat. The hat is found, a straw cartwheel, corsaged with velvet roses, out of doors has faded. It once belonged to a more fashionable relative. 
Together we guide our buggy, a dilapidated baby carriage, out to the garden and to a grove of pecan trees. Three hours later, we are back in the kitchen, hulling a heaping buggy load of windfall pecans. Our backs hurt from gathering them. How hard they were to find, the main crop having been shaken off the trees and sold by the orchard's owners who were not us. Among the concealing leaves, the frosted, deceiving grass. Crackle, a cheery crunch, scrapes of miniature thunder sound as the shells collapse and the golden mound of sweet, oily, ivory meat melts in the milk glass bowl. Queenie, that's their dog, begs to taste, and now and again my friend sneaks her a mite, though insisting we deprive ourselves. We mustn't, buddy. If we start, we won't stop, and there's scarcely enough as there is for 30 cakes. The kitchen is growing dark. Dusk turns the window into a mirror. Our reflections mingle with the rising moon as we work by the fireside in the firelight. At last, when the moon is quite high, we toss the final hole into the fire and with joined sighs watch it catch flame. The buggy is empty, the bowl is brimful. That is wonderful. It I is. think that is such a classic. It's the it classic is. of Christmas cake making. It really story, is, isn't it? yes, and it's it brings wonderful. a tear to my eye, the ending always. But yes. it's such a heartwarming read. If you've never read it, please do. It's a delightful story. It is. And you've got right for us. I too. do indeed. I've chosen an extract from Alison Utley's The Country Child, which is still one of my favourite books. Oh. It's a childhood favourite. I know I read it to you. It's lovely. It is. There was Christmas cake, iced and sprinkled over with red and blue hundreds and thousands, with a paper flag in the middle, on one side of which was the Union Jack, and on the other a clown with a red nose and pointed hat, like the ones at the circus. There was a fragrant ham, brother to those hanging in the kitchen corner, smoked and delicately flavoured, under its coat of brown raspings and its paper frill which Susan had cut the night before. There was a pie stuffed with veal, ham and eggs, potted meats in china dishes with butter on the top, brown boiled eggs in the silver egg stand which stood like a castle with eight stalwart egg cups and eight curling spoons round the tall handle. White bread and butter on the mint and china plates with their tiny green leaves and gold edges. A pot of honey and strawberry jam and an old Staffordshire dish of little tarts containing golden curds made of bee stings mixed with currants. The green and white china cups which had belonged to Mrs Garland's grandmother were ranged at one end beside the large teapot with its four little legs the china sugar basin with its lid over real crystal lumps, not brown demerara as it was Christmas, the milk jug to match, and an ancient worn silver cream jug, the Queen Anne jug, full of thick cream which would scarcely pour out. In the middle of the table were four silver candlesticks, which were used on festal days instead of the lamp, holding four tall wax candles. The delicate cups were passed up and down the table, the tiny plates heaped with food. Becky ran in and out with clean plates, knives and forks, with familiar jokes and smiles as she filled up the dishes. Old Joshua ate enough for three and then asked for more. The Christmas tree shone in the corner and on the fire blazed a log, which Becky could hardly lift when she carried it in. The room was filled with brightness and laughter, even the shadows danced and flitted across the ceiling four at a time in country bobs and jigs. They heard the sound outside of the returning cart just as the feast finished and Susan had said grace. A pile plate with a little of everything was put ready for Dan and Becky cleared away. Tom Garland stretched himself in the grandfather chair at one side of the fire 
with his feet on the brass fender, and Joshua went out to help with the mare. Becky washed up and cleared away before she got ready for chapel, and Margaret wiped her precious china tenderly with loving fingers and little reminiscences of when it had been used. Weddings, funerals, birthdays, and Christmases. <laughs> Oh, that's lovely. What an incredible spread. I know, on Christmas Day, that yes. was the spread they had. It's lovely, yes. isn't it? Yeah, truly charming. I yes. love that. Well, another one I've chosen is from this charming little short story collection called Christmas with Anne and Other Holiday Tales by Ellen Montgomery. Oh, she wrote so many lovely Christmas books. She did, and there are so many wonderful Christmas stories in this one. And this is a story about a young woman who is a student mm -hmm. and she's at a boarding house and unfortunately she can't go home for New Year's because her family have measles. Oh. So she's bemoaning the fact that she's on her own. But there's something that cheers her up. Holidays are dismal things when you've nowhere to holiday, said Ida mournfully. The time drags horribly. But never mind, girls, I have a plummy bit of news for you. I'd a letter from Mother today, and bless the dear woman, she is sending me a cake. A New Year's cake. A great, big, spicy, mellow, delicious fruit cake. It will be along tomorrow and girls will celebrate when it comes. I've asked everybody in the house up to my room for New Year's Eve and we'll have a royal good time. How splendid, said Mary. There's nothing I like more than a slice of real countryfied homemade fruit cake where they don't scrimp on eggs or butter or raisins. You'll give me a good big piece, won't you, Ida? As much as you can eat, promised Ida, I can warrant Mother's fruit cake. Yes, we'll have a jamboree. Miss Monroe has promised to come in too. She says she has a weakness for fruit cake. There goes that funny little namesake of yours, Ida, said Josie, who was sitting by the window. She seems to be staying in town over the holidays too. Wonder why? Perhaps she doesn't belong anywhere. She really is a most forlorn appearing little mortal. There were two Ida Mitchells attending the Clifton Academy. The other Ida was a plain, quiet, pale faced little girl of 15 who was in the second year. Beyond that, none of the third year Ida, Ida Mitchell's set knew anything about her or tried to find out. Now, of course, the cake gets sent to the wrong Ida. We can yes. see that one coming. Yes. So, Ida Wong goes over to <laughs> Ida Two, at first with the intention of demanding her cake back, yes. but she changes her mind. Why, how do you do, Miss Mitchell? exclaimed the other Ida with shy pleasure. Come in. I didn't know you were in town. It's real good of you to come and see me. And just see what I've had sent to me. Isn't it a beauty? I was so, so surprised when it came and oh, so glad. I was feeling so blue and lonesome as if I hadn't a friend in the world. I was crying when that cake came. It just made the world over for me. Do sit down and I'll cut you a piece. I'm sure you're as fond as of fruit cake as I am. Ida sat down in a chair, feeling bewildered and awkward. This was a nice predicament. How could she tell that other Ida that the cake didn't belong to her? The poor thing was so delighted and oh, what a bare, lonely little room. The big, luxurious cake seemed to emphasise the bareness and loneliness. And of course she lets the other Ida keep the cake and she plans a separate New Year's Eve party Aww. instead and also resolves to make a friend that of the other lovely. Ida. And I thought, again, it's such a charming story about what a difference a gift, even of something as simple as a fruitcake, 
a beautiful fruit cake to yes, make. Exactly. And it's so true. I think for a lot of people this year who might be worried about being alone, yes. it, it, it is like that's a very touching story is, and how a small, it? thoughtful gift makes the difference. And just a reminder even just to check in with people. Exactly. I think at this time so of important. year, you know, just to drop them a line, make sure they're all right, tell them you're thinking of them. But yes, because a lot of people can't be with the people maybe that they want to be yes. with this year. Yes, that's very true. But it was a really touching story. Yeah, well, I can imagine that. That would have had me cry. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, right. Thank, Thank you. you. So this one I had to um, read a little bit of. It's a very old book. It's called The Food Lover's Christmas, What to Buy and Where to Shop the perfect Christmas and it's by Henrietta Green and I think it was probably out in the 90s late 90s something like that yeah. but it's still fascinating today I mean it was a time when I remember I buying Christmas cakes to be sent to people yes yeah, that well and it would have been pre-internet it was right it so was you needed to have like the phone number and the address yes. so you could make your order and you did order from it I did I <laughs> sent to my aunt in England auntie con you yeah. know I would send her like Meg Rivers cakes and that's one of the ones yes. mentioned but I wanted to mention one here called Church Farmhouse Cakes and their address is lovely it's Croxton Kern sorry it's a bit getting a bit dark Croxton Kerriel, Grantham and Lincolnshire and I just think all oh, these wonderful sounding place names but let me read about this to you Church Farmhouse Cakes is a farmhouse business in the true sense of the word started about two years ago for her retirement by Julie Duff. Her cakes are made in her farmhouse kitchen in small batches, and as she is keen to stress, stirred with a wooden spoon. No rubber spot. Yeah. <laughs> Once the chef to the Duke and Duchess of Rutland, Julie has been making cakes since she was a child, and she still uses the same recipe that her grandmother gave her, only slightly adapted. A committed member of the You Only Get Out What You Put In School, Julie uses the best quality ingredients such as free range eggs, plump vine fruits, and butter. For the Christmas rich brandy fruit cake, first Julie soaks all the vine fruits in a French brandy for 48 hours, then she mixes in the eggs, flour, dark brown sugar, black treacle, various spices such as nutmeg and allspice natural colored cherries and ground and chopped almonds. Slowly bake to keep them moist. The cakes are then matured for at least two months. <laughs> <laughs> Probably a little bit longer until you lose the taste of treacle and the cake just becomes rich, <laughs> she says. Covered on top with a layer of almond paste and a layer of fondant icing, the cakes are hand decorated. This year promises hand-painted marzipan cutouts of a plump red-breasted robin perched on a sprig of holly. <laughs> and does that just sound delicious? Perfect. I love reading this book, yeah, just to read the description describe. of all the things you could order. Yes, I think that's amazing. <laughs> and a lovely glimpse of Christmas past, exactly. pre-internet. <laughs> pre-internet, yes. No, but her descriptions are brilliant. They, they are. Okay. Well, you love too. to have that recipe from her grandmother oh, as yes. well. Yes, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> well, I have one last reading to share from one of my favourite books. Oh, no. What Katie Did at school, at school by Susan Coolidge. And again, the girls are feeling a bit lonesome. They're having to spend Christmas at boarding school but they get a special gift sent from home. Aww. Breakfast was half an hour later than usual, which was comfortable. As soon as it was over, the girls proceeded to unpack their box. The day was so cold that they wrapped themselves in shawls and Clover put on a hood and thick gloves. Rose Red, passing the door, burst out laughing and recommended that she should add galoshes and an umbrella. <laughs> come in, cried the sisters, come in and help us open our box. Just look here, cried Katie. The top of the box was mostly taken up with four square paper boxes, round which parcels of all shapes and sizes were wedged and fitted. 
The whole was a miracle of packing. It had taken Miss Finch three mornings with assistance from old Mary and much advice from Elsie to do it so beautifully. Each box held a different kind of cake. One was full of jumbles, another of ginger snaps, a third of crullers, and the fourth contained a big square loaf of frosted plum cake with a circle of sugar almonds set in the frosting. How the trio exclaimed at this. I never imagined anything so nice, declared Rose, with her mouth full of jumble. As for those snaps, they're simply perfect. What can be in all those fascinating bundles? Do hurry and open one, El uh, and open one Katie. Dear little Elsie, the first two bundles opened were hers, a white hood for Katie and a blue one for Clover, both of her own knitting and so nicely done. The girls were enchanted. What fun it was opening those bundles. The girls made a long business of it, taking out, but one at a time, exclaiming, admiring and exhibiting to Rose before they began upon another. They laughed, they joked, but I do not think it would have taken much to make either of them cry. It was almost too tender a pleasure, these proofs of loving remembrance from the little ones, and each separate article seemed full of the very look and feel of home. Isn't that beautiful? Really For beautiful. Years, I wondered what jumbles were. Yes, and I, I found they? Like biscuits, and oh. they're sort of done in an S shape. Oh, yes, but we'll have to try one year to yes. make we'll them. Yes, we'll try and make them one year yes. in honour of what Katie did. Yeah, exactly. that would be fabulous. Well, the lights are almost gone here, <laughs> so I think we may have to end this tea reading. Yes. We're getting a bit too much in the spirit <laughs> of like, the oh, lights. Well, <laughs> <laughs> my light. eyes would give out at this point. <laughs> yes. Yeah. But we've had so much fun. We have. And we hope you've enjoyed this too. Let us know if you're making Christmas cake this December. We'd love to know. Yes, and I highly recommend this one to you. Absolutely. Yes. I'm going to enjoy finishing that slice now. It's very nice. But we'll be back again next Friday for the final tea reads before Christmas. Yes. And I'll be back again before then with more bookish content. So do give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking on my face that pops up on the screen. And I hope you have a lovely weekend. Goodbye. Bye-bye.